Imagine storing meat for 20 years without a refrigerator and still being able to eat it. In medieval times, people didn't have freezers, grocery stores, or any modern way to keep food fresh. If they didn't find a way to stop food from rotting, they could starve when winter came. But how did they manage to make food last for decades using only simple tools and natural ingredients? We will uncover methods that confirm ancient civilizations new things we ignore even today. The lost art of keeping food fresh. One of the simplest ways to make food last longer was drying it out. Without moisture, bacteria and mold couldn't grow, which meant food stayed edible for months, sometimes even years. People dried everything, meat, fish, fruits, and vegetables. If they lived in a warm area, the sun did most of the work. In colder places, they had to get creative using wind, smoke, or fire to suck the moisture out. And as a bonus, dried food weighed less, which made it easier to store and carry. If you wanted to pack food for a long trip, this was the way to go. Before we delve into this, it's clear that medieval people had food preservation tricks so powerful they could keep meals fresh for decades, and what they used might shock you even more. Another go-to method was covering food in salt. Salt sucks the moisture right out of anything it touches, and since bacteria need moisture to grow, this made food last a lot longer. There were two main ways to do it, dry salting and brining. Dry salting meant packing food, especially meat and fish, in layers of salt. Brining was soaking food in super salty water. Both worked well, and even though the food ended up incredibly salty, it was better than having nothing to eat at all. Plus, if you soaked it in water before eating, you could wash some of the salt away. Smoking food was another clever trick. Hanging meat or fish over a smoky fire did two things. It dried the food out and coated it with smoke that made it harder for bacteria to take over. Smoke also gave the food a deep, rich flavor, which made it a favorite method for preserving meat. Some people even built special smokehouses to keep a steady supply of smoked food on hand. If you wanted something that wouldn't spoil but still tasted good, smoking was the way to go. Fermentation was one of the more interesting methods. Instead of just stopping bacteria, it used the right kinds of bacteria to keep food from from rotting. Sauerkraut, pickles, and yogurt all come from fermentation. The process not only preserved food, but also added probiotics, which helped people digest food better. They might not have known all the science behind it, but they knew that fermented foods lasted longer and were good for the stomach. Pickling was another smart way to make food last. Soaking vegetables and fruits in vinegar or salt brine created an environment where bacteria couldn't grow. It worked especially well for crunchy foods like cucumbers, carrots, and onions. People even pickled eggs and meat to keep them from going bad. Pickled food wasn't just practical, it also tasted tangy and delicious, making it a favorite for many. For those who had a sweet tooth, sugar was the answer. Cooking fruit with sugar created jams and jellies that could last for months. Sugar acted like salt, pulling moisture out and making it impossible for bacteria to grow. This method was perfect for people who wanted to enjoy the taste of fresh fruit long after harvest season ended. A spoonful of jam on a piece of bread could be the closest thing to a treat in a time when desserts weren't easy to come by. When people couldn't dry, salt, or pickle their food, they found other ways to keep it fresh. Root cellars were one of the most useful tricks. These underground storage spaces stayed cool all year long, which slowed down spoilage. People stored potatoes, apples, and other hearty vegetables there, keeping them fresh for months. If you didn't have a cellar, you had to get creative. Some people buried food in the ground to keep it from spoiling. Cheese making was another way to keep food from going to waste. Instead of letting milk spoil, people turned it into cheese, which could last for months or even years. Different cheeses were made using different techniques, and some could be aged to develop Develop deeper flavors. This method didn't just preserve food, it created something entirely new and delicious. Even today, people love cheese, and it all started as a way to make milk last longer. People had to be smart about saving food, especially when salt and smoke weren't enough. The forgotten methods of storing food. Lactic fermentation was another way to stretch the shelf life of dairy. Letting milk sit out might sound like a bad idea, but with the right bacteria, it turned into yogurt or certain kinds of cheese. The fermentation process produced lactic acid, which helped stop bad bacteria from growing. It also gave food a tangy flavor that many people loved. Without refrigeration, this was one of the best ways to make sure milk didn't go to waste. For people who didn't have easy access to salt or sugar, there were still other tricks to try. Some buried food in the ground to keep it cool, while others stored it in airtight containers to keep air and pests out. Limiting exposure to air was one of the simplest ways to slow down spoilage. Even without modern technology, people found ways to make food last longer using nothing but common sense and creativity. Spices and herbs were another way to help food last. Some spices have natural antibacterial properties, which made them useful for preserving food. Even if they didn't stop spoilage completely, they helped cover up bad smells and tastes, making food more enjoyable to eat. Over time, people discovered which spices worked best and used them not just for flavor, but for preservation as well. Another trick was drowning cooked meat in melted fat. This sealed out air and bacteria, keeping the meat fresh for months. Rich folks and peasants alike used this method, and let's be honest, it was either 
that or risk eating spoiled meat. If you had fat to spare, you weren't going hungry anytime soon. Alcohol wasn't just for fun, it was a survival tool. Beer, wine, and other fermented drinks weren't just about getting a buzz, they were often safer to drink than water. Contaminated water could eliminate you, but fermentation eliminates harmful bacteria. Plus, these drinks locked in calories from grains and fruits, making them an important part of people's diets. If you wanted to avoid sickness, you were better off sipping some homemade brew than taking a chance with a questionable well. Storage was a big deal, and not just for keeping things neat. People built pantries, larders, and underground cellars with thick stone walls to keep food cool. Small windows let in just enough air, but not enough heat, slowing down spoilage. This wasn't just about convenience, it was about survival. If your food rotted before winter was over, you were in serious trouble. Living near the ocean had its perks, especially when it came to food. Salting and drying fish meant you could store protein for months, even years. Stockfish, a dried and hardened version of cod, became a lifesaver during harsh winters. It might not have been the tastiest meal, but when options were limited, no one was complaining. If you had salted fish in your storage, you had one less reason to worry when the snow piled up. Sharing wasn't just about being friendly, it was smart. Villages had smokehouses and communal ovens where people could dry and preserve food in bulk. Smoking meat, fish, or even cheese kept food edible for months, if not longer. It wasn't just about making food last, it also meant fewer resources wasted. When everyone chipped in, nobody starved. Planning ahead was a necessity, not just a good idea. People knew that a good harvest didn't mean feasting. It meant preparing for the inevitable shortage. If you didn't dry, salt, or store enough food, you could kiss your survival goodbye. The cycle was simple. Gather when times were good, preserve what you could, and make it last. There was no room for waste or laziness. These food tricks didn't just help people eat, they also shaped their daily lives and who had the most control. The hidden role of food keepers. The knowledge of these tricks didn't just come out of nowhere. Families passed down their own preservation methods like prized things. What worked in one region might not work in another, so people had to adapt. If your ancestors figured out a great way to keep apples fresh or stop grains from molding, you guarded that knowledge because it could mean the difference between life and death. Not everyone just stored food. Some people made it their full-time job. Monasteries and big estates had workers dedicated to food preservation. Larderers kept everything in check, making sure supplies were properly stored and didn't spoil. Their role wasn't just important, it was essential. If they messed up, entire communities could face starvation. Salt and sugar weren't the only things keeping food fresh. Honey, for example, was more than just a sweet treat. It had natural antibacterial properties, so people used it to coat fruits and nuts, keeping them from spoiling. It also made preserved food taste better, which was a nice bonus when winter meals got repetitive. If you had honey, you had both a sweetener and a preservation method all in one. Herbs weren't just for flavor, they were necessary for keeping food interesting. Drying herbs and storing them properly meant you had access to flavors long after the growing season ended. People hung them up in dry, airy spaces, making sure they lasted through the year. Fresh herbs were a luxury, but dried ones could still bring a meal to life. Without them, food would have been much more boring. Speaking of keeping flavors around, preserves and jams were lifesavers. Cooking fruit down with sugar or honey made spreads that could last for months. It was a way to make sure fruit didn't go to waste and to add a bit of variety to winter diets. When all you had were dried meats and grains, a spoonful of jam could make a meal feel a little more special. Even in tough times, a bit of sweetness went a long way. Cleanliness wasn't just about keeping things neat, it was about survival. If your storage area was dirty or filled with pests, your food wasn't going to last. People had to constantly check their larders and cellars, making sure nothing was contaminated. Spoiled food could spread disease, and if you lost a whole stash, you were in serious trouble. Keeping things tidy wasn't optional, it was necessary. Where you lived determined how you preserved food. In cold regions, Freezing food outside was the easiest and most effective method. In hotter climates, sun drying was a more reliable option. Every region had its own tricks based on what the environment allowed. People weren't just preserving food, they were adapting to their surroundings in the smartest way possible. Fermented drinks like mead and cider weren't just for celebration. They were another way to make sure sugars from fruits and honey didn't go to waste. Once sugar turned into alcohol, it could last for years without spoiling. If you had a good batch of mead stored away, you weren't just preparing for the future, you were making sure nothing got wasted. Plus, it gave people a safe way to drink without worrying about waterborne diseases. Storage containers mattered too. People used earthenware and ceramic pots to keep food safe. These materials kept pests out and helped regulate moisture levels, which was critical for preventing spoilage. A well-sealed jar could mean the difference between having food in the winter and going hungry. It wasn't just just about storage. It was about protection. Survival depended on knowing how to keep food from rotting. Medieval people didn't have modern conveniences, 
but they figured out ways to make food last. Whether it was through drying, fermenting, salting, or storing, they made sure they had enough to get through the hardest months. Their knowledge didn't just help them survive, it shaped entire cultures and traditions. Without these skills, history might have played out very differently, but keeping food fresh was just one part of life. What really changed history were the big empires, their rulers, and the problems they faced. The untold struggles of ancient civilizations. Ancient civilizations have come and gone, leaving behind incredible structures, strange traditions, and ideas that still shape the world today. Some of them built great cities, while others ruled vast lands. They gave us writing, government, and even the way we measure time. But not everything was as glorious as the history books make it seem. There were dark sides, hidden truths, and shocking events that changed everything. Mesopotamia is often called the first real civilization, but what does that even mean? They built cities, wrote things down, and had rulers who claimed they spoke to the gods. Sounds impressive, but life wasn't easy. War was constant, kings were ruthless, and punishments were brutal. The famous Hammurabi's Code? It didn't just say an eye for an eye, it made sure that only the powerful got justice while the poor suffered. And let's not forget the Akkadians, who took over with sheer force, or the Assyrians, who crushed anyone in their way. Then there's ancient Egypt, a land of grand pyramids and golden tombs. Everyone talks about how advanced they were, but imagine being a worker in those times. The pyramids weren't just built with skill, they were built with blood, sweat, and lives lost in the process. Pharaohs ruled like gods, deciding everything from war to how people lived and died. While they developed medicine, mathematics, and irrigation, they also practiced bizarre rituals and kept strict control over their people. And when the empire fell, it wasn't just foreign invaders, it was corruption from within. The Indus Valley civilization remains a question, but one thing is clear. They knew how to build cities better than most ancient peoples. Running water, planned streets, and no signs of massive wars. Sounds almost too good to be true, but what happened to them? They disappeared, leaving behind strange symbols that no one can read. Maybe it was climate change, maybe disease, or maybe something far more sinister. Either way, their legacy vanished and history moved on. China's past is filled with powerful dynasties, great inventions, and strict rules. The Great wall, paper, the compass, these things changed the world. But life in ancient China wasn't all about wisdom and progress. Emperors demanded loyalty, and those who opposed them were erased from history. Peasants suffered under heavy taxes, while the ruling class enjoyed endless wealth. Even Confucianism, meant to bring order, became a tool for control. The mandate of heaven sounded nice until you realized it just meant rulers could do whatever they wanted until someone overthrew them. Greece is praised for its democracy, but don't forget who was really in charge. Only a small number of men could vote, and women, slaves, and foreigners had no say. Philosophers questioned everything, but their ideas didn't always change how things worked. Wars between city-states tore Greece apart, and power-hungry leaders made the same mistakes over and over. Even the mighty Spartans, known for their strength, relied on enslaved people to keep their way of life going. Not exactly the noble warriors they liked to pretend to be. Rome took over much of the known world, but at what cost? Their empire was built on war, conquest, and forced labor. Gladiators fought to the death for entertainment, roads were paved with the suffering of workers, and emperors lived in unimaginable luxury while common people struggled. Their laws shaped the modern world, but they also executed anyone who dared to oppose them. And when Rome finally fell, it wasn't just because of invaders, it was greed corruption, and endless internal conflict that brought them down. The Maya had incredible knowledge of astronomy, built massive pyramids, and created a writing system more advanced than most. But they also practiced human sacrifice with some of the most brutal rituals in history. Their cities rose and fell strangely, leaving behind ruins filled with unanswered questions. Why did they abandon their greatest cities? Wars, famine, or something else? The answers remain hidden in their jungles. The Incas ruled an enormous empire in South America, mastering agriculture, architecture, and communication. But their downfall came swiftly, as European invaders brought diseases and warfare they couldn't withstand. They built Machu Picchu, yet much of their knowledge was lost forever. The Spanish destroyed their temples, erased their history, and forced them to give up their way of life. Their once great civilization was left in ruins. The Persian Empire stretched across continents, ruling with tolerance, at least that's what they claimed. Their system allowed different cultures to exist, but only under strict control. They created roads and trade networks that connected the world, but their enemies were met with brutal force. Cyrus the Great may have been fairer than most rulers, but those who followed weren't always so kind. In the end, even this mighty empire crumbled when a young Macedonian king named Alexander came charging in. Japan's early history is full of powerful clans, 
massive tombs and influence from China and Korea. Buddhism changed everything, shaping art, culture, and beliefs. But power struggles between clans meant that peace was rare. Emperors were often just figureheads while real power was in the hands of warlords. And as their civilization grew, so did their conflicts, leading to centuries of feudal rule and endless battles for control. Korea's ancient kingdoms fought for dominance, with each leaving behind impressive legacies. Goguryeo built massive fortresses, Baekje spread culture to Japan, and Silla unified the land. But behind their achievements were constant wars, betrayals, and shifting alliances. The invention of underfloor heating and incredible artistry were overshadowed by the brutal struggles that defined their history. Even after unification, the cycle of conflict never truly stopped. Southeast Asia saw the rise of powerful empires like the Khmer, known for building Angkor Wat, one of the most stunning temples ever created. But beyond the beauty of their temples was a society that relied on strict religious control and forced labor. The Srivijaya Empire controlled trade routes, bringing wealth and influence, yet their power faded into obscurity. Their stories remain, but much of their past is buried under time and forgotten ruins. Looking at these ancient civilizations, it's clear that greatness came at a cost. They built wonders, made discoveries, and shaped history, but none of them were perfect. Their rulers craved power, their societies had deep flaws, and their legacies were built on the backs of those who had no choice but to follow. We remember their triumphs, but should we also remember the darker truths that history tries to hide? Did medieval people truly master food preservation, or have we lost ancient knowledge that could change how we store food today? Tell us what you think, and remember to like and subscribe for more.